and Arthur Lowe, John LeMessure and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> the Recruit, featuring John Lorry, Arnold Ridley and Ian Lavender with this week's guests, Bill Pertwee, Frank Williams, Edward Sinclair, Larry Martin and Elizabeth Morgan. <laughs> Here is the news and this is John Snag reading it. The war which started in Europe has, with the entry of America and Japan, assumed worldwide proportions. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, the conflict spreads. The fighting is fierce, the casualties high. One indirect casualty of war is Captain Mannering, who is in a private room at Warmington-on-Sea's Cottage Hospital, receiving the ministrations of a pretty young nurse. Ah, oh, just let me straighten your pillows a bit, Mr. Mannering. <clears throat> There we are. Thank you, nurse. How are your feet feeling now? They're throbbing a bit from time to time, but uh, I'm grinning and bearing it. That's the spirit. Guess what? We've got some visitors to cheer you up. Oh, not Mrs. Mannering. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It's, it's two gentlemen. You can come in now. He's quite respectable. Can I do you now, sir? Oh, <laughs> oh very good, Jones. Oh, uh, how are you, sir? Hello, Wilson. You can stay until the bell goes. Oh, thank you so much. It was awfully sweet of you to show us the way. Oh, <laughs> that's quite all right, sir. Yes, I must say that uh, that uniform really does things for you. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. Well, thank you, nurse. It's the belt. <laughs> yes, I, that's what it is. I think it's the belt. Yes, it's the belt. It, it makes your waist look... Positively tiny. Oh, does it really? Yes, it does. Yes. That will be all, thank you, nurse. <laughs> yes, Mr. Mannering. Wilson, sir. Yes. It was me you came to see, wasn't it? <laughs> Besides, that nurse has got work to do, tending the sick. <clears throat> Hasn't got time to listen to you playing Ronald Coleman. <laughs> only being friendly. I brought these for you, sir. That's very kind of you, Jones, very kind. What is it? Grapes, Scott. Grapes. I haven't seen these since 1939. Well, they're, they're not real grapes, so they're... <laughs> we impersonated them out of electric light flex and shaved gooseberries, you see, sir. <laughs> we had to use the cooking variety because the, the juicy red dessert ones kept squashing all over your office desk, you see, sir. <clears throat> yes, I see what you mean. Mm. We had a lot of trouble shaving the fur off them gooseberries, sir. <laughs> Till Mr. Fraser found a very, very special piece of fine glass paper he uses to finish off his coffins with. <laughs> very thoughtful of you, Dylan. Yes. As a matter of fact, I have received some fruit from Mrs. Mannering. Oh, is it, uh, is it this, uh, this apple? Yes, that's it. <laughs> How nice, with a get well card fastened to it. Isn't that nice? What does it say? Uh, it's, it's the. Uh, the Anderson shelter is leaking again. <laughs> yes, it'll have to wait until I get back, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, by the way, sir, how did, uh, how did your operation go? Ah, now, I, um, I wanted to have a word with you, Wilson, about that uh, in private. Yes. Jones, why don't you mind just popping out of the room for a moment? Who, me, sir? Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. I have course. something rather personal I wish to say to Sergeant Wilson. Well, of course, of course, sir. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> Wilson, uh, I'm I've, outside uh, now, sir. Yes, thank you, Jones. <laughs> As I was saying, I've asked Jones to go outside. I'll just be outside, sir. See, not quite in earshot. Yes, sir. right. Thank you, Jones. But... Now, Wilson, sir. I've asked Jones to pop out because uh, I thought you ought to see my feet. <laughs> oh. Why? Well, I think it's important that you should understand the full implications of this whole affair. So, if you'll uh, just pull the blankets off. All right. <clears throat> there we are, sir. Well, what do you think of my big toes? <laughs> oh, my dear. They do look nasty. Right. Now, it's my contention, Wilson... That this is due entirely to active service. What? What, well, ingrowing toenails? Precisely. <laughs> no doubt about it at all. It's those long hours on duty. My toes will never be quite the same again, you know. Are you going to put in for a disability pension? Oh, no, 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 nothing like that. But mark my words, 
It's all that standing about that's done it. Yes, you do an awful lot of sitting about as well. Have you had any trouble at... Uh, <laughs> well, at, at that end? You have a very coarse streak, Wilson. I suppose you picked it up at that public school. I'm sorry, sir. I'm simply alerting you to my condition so that you can be on guard against it yourself and on behalf of our troops. I'll watch it very carefully. You just put the blankets back. Yes, of course I will, yes. Ah, there we are now. Is that comfy? <coughs> Thank you, Wilson. You can come back in now, Jones. I didn't hear a word, sir. I said you can come... Oh, you are in, yes. <laughs> How's the platoon doing without me, Wilson? Oh, they're, they're getting on swimmingly, sir. Oh, really? Well, yeah, well, we miss you, of course. No worry, you're bound to. Unfortunately, it looks as if I should be stuck here for another four days. Don't you fret yourself, Mr. Mannering. Mr. Wilson is making us carry on as if your invisible presence was hovering over us like a guiding star. Mm. Only you don't go in for so much bull. <laughs> Thank you, Jones. The thing is, Wilson, are you maintaining discipline? Oh, yes, sir. I'm keeping discipline really rather well. In my own sort of style. Yeah. Well, I sincerely hope you are. There's only one way to run an army, Wilson. You must have obedience. Instant, unthinking obedience. <laughs> Now, one at a time. Right. I'm sorry I have to say this, Arthur, but uh, in my opinion, you've done the wrong thing. Oh, dear, I do wish you wouldn't nag so. I've got a terrible headache coming on. The whole idea's doomed, doomed from the very start. You can't have vicars in the army, they don't mix. You're right, Chuck. It's like oil and vinegar. Mix. Awfully good salad dressing. <laughs> what does? Oil and vinegar. As long as you put the oil in first, or, or is it the vinegar? <laughs> what are you blathering on about salad dressing for you old fool? What I'm trying to say is that when young Arthur here let the vicar and the verger join our platoon, he, he made an idea to him himself. Did he know, son? Admit it. Go on, all admit right, it. All right, admit all right, it. All right, all right, all right. But what else could I do, for heaven's sake? I mean, look. Look here. Look. The story's all here in the paper. Lots of clergymen have joined the home guard. Ah, oh, you'll rue the day, mark my words. That verger's a Jonah. He's a face like a sour prune. <laughs> Mary been here, I'm sure it wouldn't have happened. Yes, well, he isn't here, and he won't be for another three days. I do wish you wouldn't keep going on at me, sir. I think Uncle Arthur did right. Vicars are good things sometimes. Remember angels with dirty faces? James Cagney was going to the chair, and Pat O'Brien, as the priest, told him to behave like a coward so that the dead-end kids wouldn't think he was a hero. And in the end, he went shouting and screaming and carrying on something awful. See? So he died all yellow. <laughs> Yeah, what are you talking about? That was Charlie Chan. Mm. <laughs> anyway, it's no good going on about them joining them. What's done is done. And it's very nearly half past six. There you are, you see. You really are very naughty, all of you. Keeping me chatting like this. I mean, we should be parading or doing something, wouldn't we? Now, come along, everyone. Come along now. Get fell in. Oh, I am. I I'm sorry I'm late, Mr. Wilson. The confirmation class went on and on. Have I missed anything? No, Vicar. We were just about to go on parade. Oh, how very exciting. I am looking forward to that. Excuse me, Your Reverend. Yes, what is it, Mr. Yateman? You left your belt in the vestry. Oh, dear. Silly me. <laughs> Thank you. Well... Now, I think this khaki's rather fetching, don't you? It does something for me, yes, don't I you think? Yes, I think it does. Yes. I hope it will, anyway. <laughs> well, now, if you're both ready, I think we can start. Oh, goody, goody. Now, then, Vicar... <laughs> Mr. Yateman and Vicar, if you'd just like to stand at the end of the line here... I see. Uh, come along, Your Reverence. <clears throat> I'll stay next to you in the parade, Your Reverence. Oh, yes, that looks awfully nice. Now, <laughs> try and do what the others do, and we'll see how we get on. Oh, yes. Isn't this thrilling, Mr. Fraser? <laughs> thrilling? It's a catastrophe. All right. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Now, just settle down, settle down. Now, squad. Squad. Squad, attention. Oh, sorry about that, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> we were a bit behind, weren't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind. Just try again, shall we? All right. Stand at ease. Oh, dear. We were naughty again, weren't we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid the new recruits are putting me off, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't awfully good, was it? You see, Vicar, the general idea 
as if you try to do it all together. Well, of course, it's so much nicer that way, isn't it? Yes, of course. <laughs> Let's try again, shall we? Well, I'd love to. Isn't this fun? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Right, squad, squad, ten, shot. Oh, yes, 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 that was quite a lot better. <laughs> oh, no, it wasn't. It was a shambles. Blimey, it's not the long Cassidy. <laughs> no, sir. Let me help you. I don't want any help. I'll get you a chair, sir, to take the weight off your crutches. Oh, don't fuss, Wilson. I'm sorry, sir, but uh, we, we didn't expect you for another three days. So I see. Beds were needed for some urgent cases, so I discharged myself. And by the look of things, it's just as well. Well, it's good to see you firmly in the saddle again, sir. Thank you, Jones. Even if you are a bit doddery on your pins. <laughs> I think I'd better inspect the men. Yes, Wilson. Sir. Right. Squad! Wilson. Yes, sir? Stand further away from my feet. Oh. <laughs> oh sorry, beg your pardon. Squad. Squad, attend, shot. Ah, oh, Jones, smart as usual. Yeah, thank you, sir. I always try to be smart and very alert, sir. Even though I'm talking to you now, my eyes are darting everywhere, hither and thither, in case they should be a lurking danger. And if I detect the slightest movement, one little bit of peril, I'm on to it before you can say, well, ha, I've got your point. Ah! Oh, get down, go to my throat, Mr. You are moving on parade. Oh, oh. Put him down, Joe. Oh. Right. Oh. That was just a demonstration of my alertness, sir. He moved, and I detected him. <laughs> Mr. Manreen, please can I go and stand next to someone else? <laughs> Stay where you are. Sir. Just a minute, Frank. Sir? What's that you've got? It's a violin case. Violin, please. How dare you come on parade carrying a violin? Take his name, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Mr. Manreen, I haven't got a violin in the case. I've got a Tommy gun, just like Edward G. Robinson. <laughs> you know, in, in Little Caesar. I can whip it out in a second. Oh. <laughs> Did you know about this, Wilson? No! <laughs> Find my feet! Stupid boy. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Manorin. Here, Mr. Manorin, I'll tell you what would be safer for you. I know where I can lay my hands on a wheelchair. Then Sergeant Wilson can wheel you up and down like Lylon Barrymore in young Dr. Kildare. It won't be necessary, thank you, Walker. A bike. Don't bring that violin case on parade again. No, Mr. Manorin. <laughs> In fact, you'd better come and see me in the office after parade. Yes, Mr. Manorin. <laughs> you too, Wilson. Right, sir. Just a minute, Walker. Walker. Yes, sir? What on earth have you got stuck in your earlobe? Well, it's an earring, isn't it? Get it off at once. Who do you think you are, Carmen Miranda? <laughs> Well, it's the only way I can get into the gypsy camp to see this bird, sir. Ah. <laughs> Might have known there was some girl at the bottom of it. No, it's not her I'm after. It's her dad. He's got the clothes peg, see? And they need them for the war effort at the ATS camp. Never heard such nonsense in my life. Well, it's the truth. Last Thursday, they hung out the washing with no clothes pegs. Then this sudden gust of wind blew up, and it was khaki knickers all the way to East Coast. All right. Then. <laughs> see me afterwards in the office. Right. There's going to be quite a queue, isn't there? That's enough. <laughs> Will you keep away from my feet? Oh, sorry, sir. Oh, Godfrey. Oh, 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 good evening, sir. Godfrey. What is that peculiarly shaped object stuck in your hat? It's his head. Yeah, uh... <laughs> Shan't tell you again, Walker. Well, Godfrey? It's for the sun, sir. For the sun? Yes, it's my nose shield. <laughs> a sensitive nose. Since Sergeant Wilson won't let me wear my Panama hat on parade, I thought this was the next best thing. You see, it clips into my sunglasses like this. <laughs> Words fail me. <laughs> Perhaps he's another one who ought to see you afterwards. All right, that's a... <laughs> Well, Fraser, at least you look normal. Oh, thank you, sir. And this wee moussey will be gone from my breast pocket by the morrow. This wee what? <laughs> wee moussey. 
Look. Bouse. Aye, there she is. Just look at the wee, slicky, cool, and timorous beast. <laughs> oh, what a panic, and... Oh, I'm sorry, sir, I was carried away looking into her wee face. <laughs> anyway, I, I could never well leave her on her own. Her bairns are due any minute now. <laughs> Pregnant moose, but mouse. <laughs> and no shield earrings, violins. I'm away for a few short hours, Wilson. And you allow the whole unit to crumble before your very eyes. Now then. Good evening, Captain Madrig. Good heavens, Vicar. What on earth are you doing here? I've joined your merry band of men. And so have I. Mr. Yaton. Wheresoever his reverence goeth, there goeth I. <laughs> This is your idea of a joke, Wilson. It's in very bad taste. They asked to join, and I saw no reason to stop them. All three of you had better come into my office at once. <laughs> come along, Mr. Gateman. Yes, Vicar, coming. Close the door, Wilson. Yes, sir. Now, what is all this tomfoolery? Don't you call his reverence a tomfool? Look, sir, it's all in the paper. Oh, that. I've read all that rubbish. Yes, well, they asked to join, so I signed them up. It was a spontaneous thing, Captain Manring. I'd rather like that, you know. Oh, yeah. I've been wrestling with my conscience for some time. Oh, yeah, as you know, it's been agony. He was wrestling night and day. I can vouch for that. Yes, thank you, Mr. Gateman. <laughs> Finally, I asked myself, could I stand by and watch my wife being raped by a Nazi? <laughs> no, I said to myself, I couldn't. But you're not married. <laughs> Yes, but I do have a very vivid imagination. <laughs> so with the example of all those other clergy before my eyes, I knew that my place was at your side. And my most too. But I don't want either of you at my side. <laughs> I'm afraid it's too late to do anything now. Very well, if that's the way the land lies. Soldiers you are, and soldiers you will be. You'll both parade tonight with Jones's section. Wilson, where do they patrol? Uh, the, uh, the gas works, sir. Good. We'll show you what army life is all about. And we won't spare you, I can promise you that. You'll find no pulpit to lean on here. Hey, Roy! Hey, Roy! Hey, Roy! Oh! Uh, Private Pike, Private Vicar, Private Verger, stand fast. Remainder into the guard hut, fall out. Now then, Private Vicar. Private Pike and myself are going to demonstrate to you the correct proceedings for military soldiers guarding things on century. First of all, you'll be on the lookout for parachuters, saboteurs, and enemies of the realm. When you see any of these approaching your person, you will take up a fearsome stance with your rifle and challenge them in a foresight manner. Show them, Private Pike. Right. Halt! Oh, who goes there? Oh, very good. Now, you do it just like that. I see. Halt! Who goes there? <laughs> no, no, you want to say it a bit more fierce, like you was a rough, brutal, devil-may-care sort of person. I thought he did it very well. I'm not asking you, Private Virtue. Silence in the ranks. I'm not frightened of you, you know. You don't impress me at all. Oh, do be quiet, Mr. Yates. If we start making trouble beyond a fissure under Section 40, that's conduct disciplinary to the military prejudice. Can we do the next bit? Yes. Uh, what is the next bit? On being challenged with Hulk, who goes there, the parachutist or saboteur says, Friend, whereupon you shout, Advance, friend, and be recognised. Right, Private Vicar, go on, do that. Hello, friend, advance and be recognised. <laughs> <laughs> you mustn't say it so friendly. You're asking them if they're friendly, but you don't want to be friendly yourself. Well, supposing he makes advances to me and I don't recognise him. Well, if you didn't know him, he's bound to know you. Oh, everyone knows his reverence and respects him. Yes, thank you, Mr. Yakeman. Well, there's a lot more to it, but you'll pick it up as you go along. Now, I'll leave you here on guard. And if you have any bother, you just send for the guard commander. That's me. And if I have any trouble, or if anyone shoots you, or anything like that, I just say, turn out the guard, and we'll all come and give you a hand. Right, come on, Pug, let's get inside in the wall. Yeah, come, come on, on, Mr. Jones. Excuse me, Your Reverence. What is it, Verger? 
I think somebody is making approaches to us. Where? Over there by the gates. I can just make something out through the murk. Oh, dear. Will you do it or shall I? Don't worry yourself, sir. I'll take care of it. Alt! Who goes there? Adolf! What did he say? I think he said Adolf. Oh. Little boy, did you say Adolf? Yeah, that's right. Adolf who? Adolf Hitler. It can't really be, can it? (laughs) I shouldn't think so, Your Reverence. I think it's a cheeky young boy having this on. Come here, little boy. Yeah, what do you want? Now listen, young man, if you don't behave properly, you'll find yourself in serious trouble for disobeying army orders. Ah, put a sock in it, you twerp. Blimey. Yeah, you're not proper soldiers. You're the stupid old vicar. And he's your stupid old verger. And you can't tell me what to do. I'll give you one more chance. Uh, Challenge him again, Mr. Yateman. Halt! Who goes there? Adolf Hitler! Oh, dear, this is serious. We'd better send for Mr. Jones. I could clip his ear for him. No, no, no. I abhor violence. We'll send for Mr. Jones. Turn out the guard! Turn out the guard! Mr. Jones! Mr. Jones! Come on. Oh, where are they? Where's the enemy? Fix bayonet. Uh, Come Mr. on now. Mr. Jones, I said, halt who goes there, just as you told me, and he positively refuses to say friend. Who does? I do. Oh, blimey, you haven't turned us out just for him. The man's unhinged. He's supposed to say friend. You said so yourself. I know him. He's a cheeky little monkey. He runs into my shop when it's full of people and shouts, Lipton's. He... <laughs> Yeah, and he runs into Swallow's Bank and shouts trustee savings. <laughs> oh, and he comes into my funeral parlour and asks if I've got any empty boxes. <laughs> yeah, well, you can't do nothing because you're not proper soldiers. Oh, help me, help me. I'll soon show you. Bring him into the guardroom. You heard what the corporal said. Get inside. Oh! Oh, blimey, hit me. Here, you're not supposed to do that. It's against the Geneva Convention. Yes, and so's this. Oh, 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 blimey, hit me again. Come on in here, young fella, me lad. He, he hit me. He hit me. That great big ugly bully, because I'll tell my uncle hey, on you. Hey, 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 watch it. Want none of that gutter snape chicken here, you wee blighter. Hey, listen, sonny, use your loaf and behave yourself, or you'll be handed over to the coppers, right? That's right, for not compiling with lawful army things what we're telling you to do. What's going on in here? Why is nobody on guard? We've detained a suspect, sir. We're just interrogating him. Suspect? Who is it? Him. He doesn't look very suspicious to me. Well, he said his name was Adolf Hitler. Uh, I shouldn't set too much store by that, Vicar, if I were you. (laughs) Go away, little boy. Future don't be so cheeky. Yo, well, that stupid old verger at me. And I want an apology. Look, just run along. Or my sergeant will put his belt across your backside. Who? Me? Oh, blimey, that's how it is, is it? Assault, battery, threats, and foul language. Yeah. Well, my uncle will have the law on you. See him off, Wilson. See him off. Look, I, I do wish you'd stop addressing me as if I was a Labrador. <laughs> Go on, you little perisher. Off with you. Well, I'll tell my uncle I will. Yeah, I'll tell my uncle. What an unpleasant child. Well, that's the end of that. However, I think one important fact emerges. If you, Vicar, and you, Verger, had dealt with this in a proper military manner in the first place, this would never have happened. Oh, I see. It's all my fault, is it? It's his reverence's fault, is it? It's yours as well. Captain Manry just said so. Aren't you being a little hard on them, sir? After all, it's their first time on guard. I know what I'm doing, Wilson. This might be an ideal opportunity to get rid of them. The fact is, Vicar, by arresting that small boy, you've made yourselves and us look ridiculous. Oh, so his reverence is ridiculous now, is he? And you too. I'm sorry, but it just goes to show how very silly this whole home guard business is. I've had enough. That goes for me too. If you both feel that way about it, I, for one, will be most happy to accept your resignations. Very well. Here you are, then. You can have your silly gun back. And your silly hat. And your silly tunic. Vicar? What about your silly trousers? Not here, if you don't mind. <laughs> I'll send them round in the morning. Oh, come along, Mr. Yeatman. Come in, Your Reverence. Good riddance of bad rubbish. Thank goodness that embarrassing little episode's over. All the same, that child was rather obnoxious. I hope he does tell his uncle. Probably give him a sound threshing. Oh, 
Uncle Bill! Uncle Bill! Hello, young Wilfred. What are you doing out this time of night? Oh, cool, Uncle Bill. I was coming up for you. I just escaped from that horrible Captain Mannering. What? Yeah, yeah. He dragged me into that guard hut and they hit me. Hold on, hold on, hold on a minute. Yeah, now, start well, from the beginning. Well, like, see, I was going past the gas works light, right? Yeah. And I just had a little joke with him, right? Mm-hmm. And then his great big home guard, he fixed me one right across the ear hole. Go on, Wilfred, go on. Yeah. Then he hit me again. And then, then... They all sit on me. What? What, pushing and, yeah. and shoving and, yeah. and punching? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, the swines. Yeah, and then old sad face. You mean Mannering? Of course. Well, he told his sergeant to give me a whipping, see, oh. so I ran away, Uncle Bill. Oh, of course. In terror. Oh, of course you did, yeah. yes. There's one thing that makes my blood boil. It's cruelty to innocent children. Yeah. Oh, they was cruel, Uncle Bill. They was... I was very cruel. Oh, you come at me, lad. I'll soon settle Manring's ash. Cool, are you going to fight him? I'm going to fight him. Well, I, well, we'll see what happens when we get there. <laughs> oh, aye, aye, sir. He, he was a cheeky wee monkey and no mistake. He, he deserved the scalping, sir. Yes, he reminded me of someone. Can't quite think who. But that ill-tempered, aggressive man of his was very familiar. Anyway, if I'm any judge of this sort of thing, we'll hear no more about it. Right, Mannering, get your jacket off and come outside. What are you talking about, Hodges? How dare you come barging into my command post like that? Wilfred, come here. Yes, Uncle Bill. Now, you repeat what you told me. <clears throat> they hit me time and time again, yeah. and Grandad there threatened me with a bayonet. Yeah. Who are you calling Grandad, you cheek young whippersnapper? You Don't let them not... hit me again, Uncle. Don't, they won't touch you. They won't dare to touch you while I'm here. Go on, go on. Then that fat big head said... Just run along, or my sergeant will put his belt across to your backside. Oh, just about your mark, innit, Mannering? Bullying little boys. Hooligans, you are. Hooligans. Now, have a go at someone of your own size. Come on, try it in me. Come on. Oh, hold my glasses, Wilson. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Do you think that's wise? Don't you tang with him, Mr. Mannering. Not in your crippled state. You let me do it for you. Here, hold my rifle, Pikey, while I hang one on him. Oh, oh, do, oh. That's sporting, that is. Seven of you against one. No, only six. I'm not feeling very well. <laughs> well, that settles it, then. I'm bringing charges. I'm having you all up in court. You're in a few home truths there. Yeah, they're a laughing stock, aren't they, Uncle? Of course they are. Yeah, <laughs> plain little soldiers, yeah. as all they do. That's isn't right, then. Yeah. yeah, plain little soldiers. <laughs> And Grandad's sausages are all made of bread. They're not all bread, you cheeky young rip. You, well, you can't get the meat. Go on. <laughs> go on, you tell them, that. Go on, tell yeah, them. Tell yeah. them. Cool. You should hear me and my mates laugh when they goes on church parade. And, and that silly old Godfrey yeah, over there. Yeah. yeah. Go Sweeting his Red Cross <laughs> handbag. Yeah, yeah. Sweeting his Red Cross handbag. Yes, go on, uh, tell them. Tell them. Go on. Yeah. Well, they're nearly as funny as the wall, dude. Yeah, that's right. They're nearly as funny. What, are you, what did you say? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You, with your dark white hat and your, your flat nose. Yeah, and your left, right, left, right. Cheeky little bloody, you just went long get my hands on you. Come back here, I'll give you flat nose. You wish you'd never be born. Come back here. You know, Wilson, come to think of it, he has got rather a flat nose. <laughs> hey, that comes from always sticking into other people's business. <laughs> In that episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessurier as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Laurie, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Bill Pertwee, Chief Warden Hodges, Frank Williams, the vicar, Edward Sinclair, the verger, with Larry Martin as Private Walker, and Elizabeth Morgan as the nurse and the small boy. The Recruit was adapted for radio by Michael Knowles and Harold Snowd and produced by John Dials. (laughs) 